Today I'm talking to Clarissa Hildago. Clarissa is 30 years old and she has two beautiful daughters and she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis at only 19 years old. But Clarissa is a registered yoga teacher specializing in accessible and prenatal yoga. And she's also a birth doula and an advocate for the MS Society. Clarissa, I'm so privileged and honored to be speaking to you today. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on this webinar and podcast. It's, it's just such an honor. How are you doing today? Thank you so much, Earl. The, the honor is all mine. Um, <laughs> I know we played tag for a little bit, you know, trying we to did. find the right time and stuff, but um, we, we got it and um, I am so happy to be here. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. I know we, when we connected and I heard your story about being diagnosed with MS so young and then listening to you and all the great things that you're doing as a registered yoga teacher and you have two daughters, you're a mom and you just told me you got married recently. I mean, you have so much going on. Your life is just so full of excitement. How are you managing everything? <laughs> Oh my gosh. So I, so the latest thing on top of all that, which, you know, there's always that going on, but, um, I'm starting like a program for my multiple sclerosis mamas because, you know, I'm, I'm an MS mama of two. So I've got a Facebook group, like 500 strong. We're actually launching a program soon, uh, catered mamas and their difficulties and the stresses and wouldn't you have loved that little shoulder to cry on and you know just that uh, support I love that that's so nice that's Thanks. great to have that support system and you know and for somebody myself who's diagnosed with Parkinson's at a young age I understand that you need that support system um, and you being diagnosed at so young as well when you first got that diagnosis how how did your life become like how did things begin to change for you oh my gosh girl it was crazy so I mean when I was diagnosed I I was a sophomore um <laughs> college um, when I was diagnosed ma'am it, it was pretty crazy it was just like this this thing that I had never heard of I had never heard the two letters together m and s so I mean the okay so let me just lay it out like this I don't I wasn't really attuned to the MS. So let me start way back. So when I was like a freshman, you know, second semester of freshman year, I would get these like vertigo episodes. You know what vertigo is? Yes, yes. Yeah. So vertigo are like, they're like these dizzy spells that you get, right? And um, those would happen to me periodically. And I went to my doctor and I asked questions and you know, she, I was I was at university at that time, and I said to her, "You know what is going on? Do you know?" She she honestly didn't know. She explained to me something crazy. Um, but I was like, "Okay, okay," you know. And so I went home, and I didn't think about it, you know. And I continued my studies, and I would, you know, back and forth. But actually. I remember the summer before my sophomore year, I remember going to the beach um, and having terrible, terrible issues dragging my feet. You know, and I kind of want to think that that's the beginning of it all right. um, because I was diagnosed that December. Yeah. And so being diagnosed that December, it just, it happened by coincidence. I went home for Christmas break, two weeks at a time. I never go home, excuse me. No, take your time, please. So I was a busy college and I never go home. Um, so when I did go home, I was still having those issues. Those issues had progressed even more than summer. Right. And I hadn't told anyone. Well, maybe I had mentioned it once or twice, but it, it wasn't a big deal. So when I went home and people actually saw me and I was by that time falling periodically and then it would get worse and stress would make things worse 
and you can only imagine the holiday stress. <laughs> oh yeah, and and now I I feel you. And so all of that was making it exacerbate. Right. So my mom saw me fall, <laughs> oh. and and my mom's like, I'm, you know. I was only there for, for a few days. I would only go home for a few days at a time. So when I was there and I was falling and I was falling for multiple times in an occasion, she was like, you know, that's it. And lo and behold, the one day- the diagnosis at that time. Your mom had no idea what was going on. Okay, yeah. No one even, honestly, the first time I was diagnosed, like, it's like everyone was introduced to this. It's not like- everyone just hears of MS and we talk right. about it all the time, like yeah. cancer. Exactly. You hear about things, but you don't really, until it hits home, you don't really experience the full effect of it. So I understand what you're saying with, about that. And so my mom's like, you know what? That's it. I've had it. I'm tired of seeing you like this, even though it was only like a little bit of instances. I'm like, shit, you should see me like the rest of the time, mom. <laughs> right, right. Um, when, you know, when I'm actually going to school and when I'm doing all these other things, my falling, my falling um, had really progressed by that time. Right. So I'm the oldest of nine. Nine brothers. Um, yeah. So uh, I <laughs> wow. am. I'm half Mexican. I am a quarter Filipino and I'm quarter white. Oh um, my God. What a wonderful, beautiful mix. <laughs> it's so crazy because like I'm so fair skinned, right? <laughs> I could never tell. And, <laughs> <laughs> and my husband is full Mexican oh, um, nice. and it's just it's it's this beautiful mix and my daughters are just gorgeous you know oh, I can and imagine I, yeah I'm, I'm very thankful for it but you know having this mix my mom was like you know what I don't know what's going on but our first urge for whatever reason you know like I said, oldest of nine, I grew up on Medi-Cal, which is a government run program. And I really, um, I just had to go to the emergency room. And she was like, you know what? I'm not gonna do anything else. Just this is how I approach things, which is my mom, oldest, um, you know, the mother of nine kids. She's like, I'll go to the emergency room. I don't care what it is. Right. Um, so I'm like, okay. And I thought that was like overblown because I, I never liked those kind of things. Right. So I went and my spouse went with me, who was my boyfriend at the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was 19 still. So young, yeah. I'm married. Um, and we waited and we, we waited in the emergency room. So what happened when we got there is it's Christmas Eve. Everyone's mm -hmm. off work, you know, and, and it's super busy. So we waited, we waited about two hours, I think, before we even got seen. Mm -hmm. So by, by that time, I'm like, oh man, you know, this can't be anything. Well, they got me back there and they're like, oh, well, this is wrong. And why is it your I following my finger um, and they started noticing little things and they're like we're gonna admit you I'm like wow so they admitted me lo and behold the neurologist was very good friends with my father he got me on everything right away got everything done right away and not everything happens like that I don't know if you can think your diagnosis yeah it was yeah a little bit different but yeah <laughs> it, it doesn't always it doesn't happen that way right it doesn't happen that way like when do you just hear of that you know what I mean mm -hmm. people being rushed into things and and we're just gonna you know take care of things on the spot they took care of everything right there on the spot in the emergency room my father was friends with the neurologist and he was like, we think your daughter has MS. You know, they did MRI, which is just a brain scan. Right, right. right. Yeah. And they could see like holes. The lesions, right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they could see those kind of things and they're like, you know what? And they just told me, they're like, 
we're 99% sure it's MS. So we're going to do a lumbar puncture. Yeah. And so they did one that night. Um, I don't even remember how long. I think I was just there overnight. Right. Um, but they did the lumbar puncture. The lumbar puncture right now is the only accurate way to tell if someone has MS. Yeah. Um, so weeks later, it confirmed it. Um, but the doctor tried to begin me on treatment right away. It was pretty um, <clears throat> traumatic. Oh, I, I, you explaining it to me, and it sounds very traumatic. And I, I can definitely connect with everything that you're saying because I know how I felt also. Um, but to me, you know, looking at you now, speaking to you, it, you've come such a long way, Clarissa. I mean, you are just an amazing, amazing woman. You have two beautiful daughters, a husband, and you're doing so much. So you obviously overcame that that little hump where, you know, the initial diagnosis hit. And I know how that feels. Thank you. I, you know what? Everyone has to, I guess. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it, it's how you choose to respond to situations. And you obviously chose to respond in a certain way. You chose to turn your life around and use that towards motivation to drive you to do some great things. So, you know, tell me about your life now. How, what are you, what are you doing now? And how did you start overcoming those hurdles? Oh my gosh. So it wasn't easy. Is it ever? Um, <laughs> it's never easy. It's always a challenge. Isn't that what makes it stronger? <laughs> totally, totally. And like, you know, I always say it like to my mamas, to my MSers, everyone, I always say that's the mamas is what I call like my, yeah. my MS mamas. Um, I always say it to them. Like if I hadn't gone through it, if we wouldn't have gone through these things, we wouldn't, it. we wouldn't know what life is. Right. So true. And so really true. like, yeah, I'm not going to say what doesn't kill us makes us stronger because that's, I, I don't believe in that, yeah. but I do believe in the things that you go through make you who you are oh yeah i a hundred percent agree um you know i know when i got diagnosed i thought my life was completely over too i'm sure you had this, the same feeling and i just didn't i couldn't see past that and it took a long time to get past that initial hump and then realize that okay all these challenges have led me to where i am right now like i probably wouldn't be speaking to you right now and listening to your amazing story and just connecting and maybe helping other people out there and just bringing awareness and inspiration to so many other people who maybe are in this position, maybe newly diagnosed, you know, and hearing your story and sharing your experience is helping so many other people. So yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, what we go through, the challenges that we face, it's, it's really, it's what makes us and what gives us the ability to keep going. I know that you are a registered yoga teacher. How did you get into doing that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> that, I find well, it so that came because of MS honestly let me be like totally honest with you but really like it's totally true what you say like I struggled for years you know mm -hmm. I think I went through a good at least two three years where it was just difficult it was just difficult right. and the issues were still there and I wasn't addressing them because I wasn't ready to deal with my illness Right. Um, that, that's, a, that's a good one. I am glad that you said that because I think that we need to take a step back and talk about that because sometimes when you get that initial diagnosis or anything that happens in your life, it's hard to accept and it's hard to talk about that. So how did you begin opening up and talking to people about what was happening in your life? Because that was extremely difficult for me. <laughs> I didn't. I was in this thing. It's pretty crazy because, um, you know, I was always, um, I was always the talkative person. I always expressed myself. I, you know, I did it in college. I, did it when I was little, you know, my, my parents knew me for that, but I didn't say anything because it's like, why would I say anything about my difficulty? I was supposed to be this like strong person. You know, I was senior right. class president, yearbook editor in high school. Like I did all these wonderful things. It was like, I went to, you know, the, the college of my choice. I did all these things. Why would I put myself in that sort of position, yeah. you know, to, to, to tell them, look, look at my vulnerability and look at how weak yeah. I am. Right. You know, they had just bought, my parents had just bought me a car. Like, 
all of these crazy things. Right. Um, I mean, it was, you know, it was, it was just pretty crazy. Yeah. I, um, I just really had to take a deep dive and I went into a serious depression, like serious, serious depression. Like I lost a lot of weight. Um, I think you can look at like my, um, my graduation photos mm -hmm. and I'm really skinny. Whereas mm -hmm. when I was diagnosed, I was, I was like tipping the scales, like 160, 180, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, that was like probably my heaviest, but it was, it was just more than that. You know, it was the depression. It was the anxiety. It was like, how do I function as a 19 year old with this and go yeah. to party and do all these crazy things, you know, do all this, have this life yeah. that I was told that I was supposed to have. And, and that that's the hardest part when that initial diagnosis comes and you think about how your life is supposed to be, like you just said, with friends and family and raising kids and going to parties. And it's like, how, how do you function? How do you exactly I don't think like people kids. recognize that people don't realize like that's the first thing that, that came to my mind. I was like, what, how am I going to do this? How am I going to like raise my children? How am I going to go out with my friends and have a good time? And I, you know, everything, all those, all those feelings hit. So I, I, I connect with everything that you're saying. Well, it's because the process of being diagnosed with a chronic illness, the, the process of breathing, basically, that's what it is. If, because I was going to school, mind you, I still continued my life after this. I still got my degree in three years. I still yeah, went to my yeah. MSW, but I, but I decided to be a yoga teacher. You know, I still did all that, but I don't know how I give you so much credit, girl. I don't it, know. If I, <laughs> I mean, I was past all those stages. So for you at that age to have to go through that and still progress and get your degree. Oh my God. That's amazing. You are such an inspiration. Thank you. You know what? But, but I never like, I don't know, like, I don't know how people conceal their, their struggles. Like, I'm just like a total, like, I did this when I was like, 13. um, <laughs> I was like, you know, the kid, 13, 14. Um, but it's actually symbolistic that, you know, I wear my heart on my sleeve because that's very like me. That's what I do because I don't really, I think it's my personality. I think in my astrology sign, I think it's just me just to authentically show up as myself. Right. That's, um, the best. that's the best way to do it. Yeah. And I think that's why my group is 600 members strong. Oh, yay, I think that's girl. why, you know, we're like super active and, you know, everyone is just ready for this wellness program that's coming. And everyone's like, you know what? We've created this bond. How did we do it through COVID? I don't know, but you know, we right. were able to make these crazy connections right. despite COVID, right? Yeah, and that's what it's all about. If you can make those human connections and interactions and people want that, especially in the midst of COVID when everything was happening. Oh my God, the support was so needed. I, I know for everybody, they people want to- crave it. And you know yes. what? Let me be honest with you. Our society, especially, you know, um, my my population with conditions and elderly right. we're not going to be ready right away to just jump back into society no, it's going to take gonna, a little time right yeah. it's going to take a little bit so right. we're going to need all this support still so it's good yeah. to, that we're that we're honing these skills right it was beautiful to see how myself as he actually did complete his social work degree his master oh, nice. Um, so it's beautiful to see how he was able to do things online and it was, it was beautiful to see how the whole world kind of came together, you know, how they could right, right. through this, but, you know, so backing it up a little bit, I didn't do nothing. I didn't say nothing. I didn't tell anyone. I started limping so bad. Like I would fall, I would cry, like it would be bad. Yeah. I lost vision and I at one point finals, um, I just kept going. 
kept going. Right. And I kept doing all these things. I didn't really say much to my family because I didn't want them to, to stop me. Right, to work right. exactly. So I got the degree. I went to my master's program and a week into it, I was like, I need a break, you know? Right. right. And so when, the, when, when I decided I needed the break, I was like, I need to get healthy. I found yoga. I did all these things. It was crazy. It was crazy because I was sitting in the waiting you in the, uh, in the waiting room at UCSF. I was sitting there waiting for my neurologist when I met a man who happened to be from the same tiny little central valley town that I was actually from oh wow coincidence yeah and he was yeah and he was like hey um have you ever tried yoga I was like uh no who are you but (laughs) see how the worlds just seem to align the universe always drops you these signals when you need it the most and I have found that to be so amazing that that happens and and speaking to people and hearing your story now that it comes to more true (laughs) and it was just crazy he was like hey you know uh have you ever tried yoga which is like first of all um you know I'm with my boyfriend hello but (laughs) you know what I mean like that's the automatic woman response but um in in me sometimes that is especially you know with with men I don't I don't really you know, I don't really come first, especially we're in the same waiting room. We're going to both be seen for an MS visit. Right, he right. happened to have MS as well. So we get mm-hmm. And lo and behold, we're from the same town. Right. We know the same things. And he's like, yeah, I go to this yoga studio. Um, and I wasn't driving at the time. I had put my car on Nana. My, my symptoms were scary. He was like, yeah, um... I'll drive you. He, and he was like, you want to go? And I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you telling me get into your car? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's so I'm funny. Just saying, I'm just saying, but my spouse, you know, my spouse was right there. And he was like, right. you know, this guy is really nice. Like, I think you should go with him. And so, you know, I worked up the courage to go, which was crazy hard because that same doctor's visit, the, the right. waiting room for my doctor talked to me about fitting me for a walker um, uh, because my, my issues had really, really progressed. Right. And the issues up here were progressing right. so much to where he was like, let's, let's, let's make this easier on you. I'm not yeah. ever going to doubt him or say he wasn't right. Uh, but I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. So I started going to yoga. And it was once a week and it was super hard. Like oh, I can for imagine. me, I, I, well, yeah. it was super hard. And I was like, wow. After the first class, I was like, I don't know if I want to go back. And I was sore for days, but then I got better. And then I was like, oh, wow. Like I can like move a little better and, right. and it started to get better. Yeah. So I started going, I started going every week and he was like, yeah, you can get a grant from the MS society. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, they'll pay for it. And so that's what I did. Um, And so I went to yoga and when I got the grant, I got a full membership to my yoga studio. So I took my car off Nana and I gained my strength and I started going to twice a week three times a week you you see the power of these things how they can help and help us to heal and that's what it's all about and sometimes you go to the doctor and you don't hear about these things unfortunately the first you know defense is always to take a medication or take a pill like you said fit you for a walker but you found something that literally helped you so much and And it was it was all coincidence and I that's I I love that that's what I say when the universe really can align things for us and it's amazing to see how that all comes together oh my gosh that's an amazing story Clarissa I I mean it was it was just crazy because I started and I started doing it I started checking on him right 
he started kind of falling off and not mm -hmm. showing up to yoga class. So I would kind of like, uh, you know, he became accountable, his accountability partner. Which yeah, yeah, we were total partner. accountability partners. I love that. And we would get it, you know, we would get it like that. But honestly, um, the disease path for men with MS is a little different for women. Mm -hmm. So men are diagnosed half as likely as women are. Okay. We're diagnosed at twice the rate of men. Um, so we know we know that there's different components to right. MS. Right. It for whatever reason favors females. Right. We know that it favors the Caucasian race usually, which is actually changing now. Cause look at me, I know so many other people. I know a lot of, there's blacks, there are Caucasians, Hispanics, there's mm. everything all across the board. And that's why, you know, the MS society, everyone is like, why is this progress? What's going on? Mm. Well, and, th and that's, that's a great question. And I think a lot of it, and I'm glad you, you brought that up because a lot of it has to do with what we, you know, inflammation and our diet and changing how we're living beforehand. And I wish that I, I had known that. I always tell people, I mean, I changed my diet and I'm sure you did too. So, you know, so differently from what I used to eat after my diagnosis. But had I just known about the, the issues of what could happen to our bodies and what we're putting into our mind and bodies and how it could affect us, maybe it could have avoided I don't know but you know girl I you know what I'll be I always say it and you hear me you know kind of I'm finding yoga you know right. you're hearing the story and stuff I I it wasn't like this at the beginning and it wasn't even like this at this point in the story right. but I'm always like MS is the best worst thing that ever happened to me you know, it's funny that you say that because I, I kind of say the same thing sometimes where I say, this was my purpose. This was where I had to be at this point in time. And this is what I have to be learning. This is what I have to be doing. And it took me a long time to get to that point to say that confidently. And the way that you're saying it so confidently, if you're so sure about it, I, I love that. I mean, it's been 10 years, girl. I mean, I'm like, it was sink or swim, you know what I mean? I oh wasn't God, gonna... I know, I know, I know. It's, and it's, it's, I, it's hard, it's, it's hard. Listening you know, to your story is just like, I have to tell you, giving me so much more hope. I, I, I do have to tell you, you're inspiring me so much right now. <laughs> oh, of course, girl, you know, that's what I'm here for. And not just for my, my MS mamas, not just for people with MS. Everyone needs to be inspired by this story because yeah. of the fact that it doesn't, life doesn't end. No, it doesn't. And it, and, and sometimes it even gets a little better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or sometimes it can get a lot harder and that's all part yes, it of can. it. Failure. But success. your perspective changes and you know what I mean? It's just, right. everything has to be with a grain of salt. Yeah. And I think it's how you respond to situations when things happen and how you choose to transform your attitude and how you choose to look at the world and, the, you know, can you be positive about it or is it going to be a negative day? And I know you probably do the same thing as I do. I get up and set my intentions for the morning and say, you know, this is going to be an amazing morning. I'm going to accomplish this today. I'm going to be healthy and happy and just live my, live my life to the fullest extent. And I can see you doing the same thing and how you have two beautiful daughters so how how has that been raising your daughters and do they know about your ms oh, well they're so oh, young so yeah. one in five oh right? my gosh how could they not know <laughs> but well um, yeah they're so young i know you know they're young well obviously the one-year-old's like i don't know but <laughs> um the thing is you know i did the college thing and then i dropped out and became a yoga teacher which but is probably so much better Prior to being a yoga teacher, I dropped out of college. I got pregnant. I had the baby. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be a yoga teacher. Because my whole life changed when I got right. pregnant. Right. I'm sure you can relate. A hundred percent. Everything changes. 
Yes, it has. But it, it seems like it's changed for the better for you. And I feel like this journey is just something that you're going to be continuously on. And it's only going to get better for you, Clarissa. I can see Thank that. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know what? I so appreciate all the positive affirmations because you know what? We all need it in this life and we need it in this time, correct? Yes, and we need to support each other. We need to be here for each other. And this is what it's all about. I created the ability to do these webinars and podcasts to have this, you know, uh, to have people like you come on and spread inspiration and awareness and just talk about our stories and share and help other people. Because you know what, there's so many people who are diagnosed at a young age, and they don't know what to do. They don't know how to deal with that grief. They don't know how to accept and move on. For me, it took me a very long time to get to that point of acceptance. And I'm not saying I surrendered to the disease. I'm saying that I accepted it and that I'm able to say, this is my path, of course, and I'm going to move on and I'm going to, you know, figure out a way to live healthy and happy and exactly what you're doing. And, you know, I think that's what it's all about is trying to figure out what to do and how to live your life to the, your best ability. And really, it's all about the mentality, right? Because right, like I say, sense. there is like succumbing to and then there's acceptance. Right. And, exactly. and it's, it's, they are two completely different things, exactly. you know? So I will say, you know, having my kids and stuff was more of acceptance in a way too, because when I first got pregnant with my daughter, I was like, how the hell am I going to do this? I have MS. I mean, everyone was like, what, what are you doing? You know, how are you going to get pregnant? It wasn't on purpose, by the way. Um, but is it, is it ever, I don't know, but I just, you know, I was like, I'm going to have this baby. I'm going to be healthy. In fact, yeah. individuals with MS, I'm not going to say individuals, but women with MS, okay. they get pregnant many times, not all the time. They go into remission. Oh, really? Which means complete, like for Reversal. the most part just the symptoms subside or just go away that's interesting I didn't I I had never heard that before it's it's very interesting because it just it, it's just an, a testament to what our own bodies can do for us yeah well I um, always say that our bodies have the innate ability to heal itself you just have to give it the chance and the opportunities I 100% agree I mean I just remember my mom looking at me and saying, oh my gosh, this means you need to be pregnant all the time. And I was just like, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, you know, oldest than that. And so she's like, oh yeah. <laughs> like, no. You're like, ah, oh, no, let's see. You know, right it, but it was crazy. I mean, I did the prenatal yoga religiously and I kind of, you know, just took care of my eating right. like you say I took care of you know exercise all that kind of right, stuff right. and everything just fell into place and so yeah. it was a hard delivery um but what is it for the first time oh any delivery is hard girl carrying a baby <laughs> everything is hard about that but you got through it's, it right it's crazy because you know I felt the best I had felt in a really, really, really long time. I mean, I was already getting better. I was already eating healthy, yoga, blah, blah, blah. Right. But then the baby came along and I was like, oh my God. And um, right. I had already switched. I had already switched to a different drug at that time too, which right. is kind of like a miracle drug to me because I never want to, I never want to knock pharmaceuticals because I'm not going to say that, right. that, oh no, they're not for anyone. No, modern medicine definitely has its place in the world along because, with everything else that you're doing. Yes. yes agreed, because, agreed. Yes, exactly. Because it has to be a holistic regimen, right? Yes, it does. It's it not, yeah, it doesn't really does. work. So it was amazing that, you know, it was this chicken or egg situation where I found yoga, you know, I found my new medication and then lo and behold I get pregnant right afterwards right. my life just completely did a 360 yeah. and um I was like you know what I'm gonna have this baby and then almost I mean almost less than three months afterwards I was in registered yoga teacher training oh my god that's amazing and it was just so meant to be. It was the entire path was meant to be because I was actually going to go into teacher training when I got pregnant. Right, right. But then I got pregnant. Um, so everything, the whole path was 
meant to be. It's brought me where I am here. And really, I am a registered yoga teacher. I teach for Dignity Health. Um, I do accessible and prenatal yoga for them. But I'm beginning this program because this is what I needed. Right. I don't know if, if no, that's that makes, like... No, that makes total sense. It's, it's giving you a sense of purpose and a sense of life, and it's giving you back your ability to live. And I totally, totally get that. And that makes perfect sense. And not only that, I mean, it it gives me like my little give back feeling. Right. You know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. And because I always tell my mamas, you know, what wouldn't you have given, you know, to, to just have that person that I they understood the pregnancy the ms and how it how it works all together well here's a group of 600 of us strong right here you know yeah um, no, absolutely that makes perfect sense um so wow. it's all led me here yeah. and i just wanted to say that this you know this program it's comprised of everything i am because my recent certification is as a birth doula right I did it after my last kid because it was it was it was it was a struggle, you know. I went through prenatal depression with this last child and yada yada yada. So I was like, you know what, enough of this. I need to be the resource that I never had. Right. So I created it. Um this is gonna have yoga, it's gonna have mental health resources in it. Oh, it's amazing. Everything it's, they need, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it's really just going to be basic- approach. Really yeah, is. yeah. It's right. basically, right? It's what the doctors never gave us. <laughs> no, and, and that's so true. And I was just having this conversation with somebody. I, I, I wish to see that day where it becomes more integrated. And I think we're getting there slowly. But I, I do want to see that integration happen when you can go to the doctor. And some doctors are doing it. Well, they'll say, okay, here's the medication. But also, you know what? You know, the exercise can help. Yoga can help. You know, different therapies can help or, you know, things like that. So I, I, I see it going there slowly. Um, but I think it's also up to us to take that proactive approach like you're doing, like I'm doing, and really empowering yourself with the education and information that you need to understand how can you live healthy? How can you help yourself? Because it's all about you and your family at this point in time. And you have taken that proactive approach. And that's that's amazing. I mean, this is great that you're helping others and you're using your abilities, what's happening to you to help others. And I'm doing the same. I never thought I'd be able to, to do that. I really never thought I'd be in that position where I can say that I wanted to help others because I didn't know how to help myself at first. But, you know, listening to your story, I feel like I'm on the right path. So that's good. <laughs> are, you are girl. And just like bringing all of these people together mm-hmm. and having this platform, that is like more than enough because this is the thing. You don't have MS, but I'm sure you know more individuals that have right, MS. Right. And you know, maybe someone's friend that hears this pro- podcast mm-hmm. is didn't doesn't have MS, but but their Somebody their mom's does. aunt's friend right. does and they hear about it. It's, it's, it's completely what you talked about in the beginning. It's this whole holistic approach and this full circle. Right, bringing it back together. And even oh. if you don't have MS, you know, I have Parkinson's and some people have other things, whether it's, it's, par- it's Parkinson's or MS or something else, having a chronic illness or disease or dealing with any type of challenge in your life, you need a support system. You need to know that other people are out there and that the world is open to you and that you can actually heal and you can help yourself along the way. And that I think that's what it's really all about is just finding that peace and grounding within yourself and coming in tune with yourself and realizing that there's options for you and that the world is not over. Your life is not over. And it, it, it took me a long time to see that. So that, that's my goal is to help everybody realize that whether you get a diagnosis tomorrow or it was yesterday, you know, don't look at it as a grim diagnosis. Look at it as a way to move forward and find some, find purpose in your life like you have done, you know? So I think it's amazing. You know what, girl? I like, like, you know, my story shows, it wasn't always that way. Exactly. But it's not always the fact, that way. 
the fact that I came to where I am, I hope that is inspiration for you and you know oh, it is <laughs> 500 other people just because if it's if if not that then what you know what do we no exactly oh my god Clarissa this is so amazing thank you thank you thank you for joining me today I mean I love love that conversation I I definitely want to do some more stuff with you we're definitely going to collaborate a little bit more I think that we have so much more in store for people um so you know I want to say thank you again for joining us today on the Simply Real podcast and webinar uh, any lasting thoughts for our listeners and where can they find you if they want to find you? And you said Facebook, right? You have the program. Yeah. So uh, we'll be launching in just a little bit when I get my stuff together. <laughs> but um, so basically you can just add multiple sclerosis mamas.com. I mean, not multiple sclerosis mamas.com. Just at multiple sclerosis mamas on Instagram. Okay at Multiple Sclerosis Mamas on Facebook. Um, the group is called Multiple Sclerosis Mamas. Oh, so uh, it's it's all very streamlined. We try to keep it uh, very similar across the board. You'll see it's like a white image with a blue outline of women embracing mm, each other. Okay. Uh, it's a very you know beautiful image of what we try to portray and uh, idolize, of course. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. And I urge and encourage everybody, please go check out Clarissa and the wonderful things that she's doing. She's truly an inspiration. And thank you once again for joining us today. I really appreciate your time and you coming on and just inspiring us and giving us the ability to stay motivated. Thanks, Clarissa. And enjoy thank the rest you. of your day with your beautiful family and your daughters. And I, we'll, we'll be in touch. So I know we're going to keep collaborating. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank oh, you. Absolutely. Have a great day.